So for my lab practicum, I decided to uh, explain uh, vacuum filtration. And so vacuum filtration is used primarily to collect a desired solid. Um, and an example of this is the collection of crystals in a recrystallization procedure. Um, so the uh, things that we need for vacuum filtration are here on this paper. Um, first thing we need is a Buchner flask uh, with a make sure it has a sidearm. Um, we need a Buchner funnel that has a rubber adapter so that it'll keep everything uh, sealed airtight and nothing will escape the flask. Uh, make sure that the Buchner funnel has obviously ha needs to have holes in it to allow the liquid to pass through it. We're going to need filter paper. Um, we need to make sure that the filter paper is large enough to cover all the holes in the Buchner funnel, but small enough to actually fit inside. We're going to need rubber tubing. Um, and then we're going to need a vacuum source. Uh, usually this is something that's, you know, in the lab, like in the wall that we can use. Um, so a couple things to note, um, obviously vacuum filtration is faster than gravity filtration um, because the solvent or solution is being forced through the filter paper by an application of reduced pressure. Um, obviously this is in contrast to gravity filtration as only gravity would be acting on it to filter it out. Um, also we need to note that we do not use vacuum filtration to filter a solid from a liquid if the liquid is what you want or if the liquid is low boiling. Anything that boils uh, at about 125 degrees or lower will boil off under the reduced pressure that the, uh, the vacuum source causes in the flask. Um, a couple precautionary things to uh, note is to make sure that our, um, our tubing is thick walled tubing, not Tygon tubing, the thinner stuff. The uh, thick wall tubing needs to be used because the thinner tubing will sometimes collapse under the reduced pressure and that can cause problems. Um, also other things that we need to make sure that uh, we do not cause is that the vacuum is not strong enough to rip the filter paper because at that point we will have to restart everything. And sometimes in extreme cases we need to be careful because sometimes the flasks may break under the pressure. So we need to make sure that we keep all of these in check when we are doing this. So now I'm going to explain how we're actually going to proceed with vacuum filtration. Um, obviously I have everything drawn already done, but I'll kind of explain it. Um, first thing we need to do is add the Buchner funnel to the uh, Buchner flask obviously with its uh, rubber funnel adapter right there. Keeps everything uh, sealed, airtight, nothing can escape. Then we're going to obviously grab the filter paper as I show here, see how the holes are all covered up. Can't see any of the holes. Make sure that again, that the filter paper is small enough to fit inside the funnel, but large enough to cover every single hole. Um, we are then going to connect the uh, rubber tubing to the sidearm flask and then Connect the under, other end to the vacuum source. Again, the one I show is, you know, the kind of the regular default vacuum source in the wall in the lab. So there's that. The first thing we're going to have to do is actually wet the paper um, with the solvent that we're going to use just a little bit so that it actually adheres to the plate and nothing can get underneath the filter paper. If this happens, we're going to have to restart completely. Um, then once that is done, we're gonna pour the whole mixture into the Buchner funnel. Um, obviously your solids, your liquids will all be in here. And um, we will then turn on the vacuum source and you should feel some suction. If you were to put your hand kind of like over the top, it would give you suction, you'd feel it. Um, you should see maybe liquid dripping from the bottom and the liquid would be collected in the flask. Um, over time, um, obviously it depends up to you how fast you'd want to do it. You open up the vacuum filter or the vacuum source more, it might do it a little quicker. Obviously you risk the ripping of the um, filter paper, but you can kind of decide how fast it does it. And in the end, you should just have your solid up here, more dry, and then the liquid or solvent down here. And then you can pull, usually most of these have a 
disconnect at this point where you can just pull it off and you can take the filter paper with you and you will have your solid with you and that's it basically to disconnect it we're going to turn off the vacuum source pull the tubing out of everything and clean it and that is how you do vacuum filtration